So what the KDF does, when we have triple platinum activities, KDF will come in, we will transport all the seeds. This is on air. On air, African, on air, African. Will be the next. So also with the mathematics has to be once this grows, we must vacate the ground to allow natural generation. Then to another area. So perhaps in this one, this will be the last time we are seeing crops. Beyond this, you allow now the grass and others to come so that then we can use the silver. is not cheap. It's very expensive. It's very expensive. Destruction is very, very easy. Destroying is very easy. You see those trees now? These are the remnants of what it was. You can imagine the energy, the resources we're going to impound here to go back. To back. And that's why we have to ensure that the area is safe. Plant about 530,000 tree seedlings. But of course, the target, main target for this period and the next rainy season is about 1.2 million tree seedlings. And these are indigenous trees. And therefore, we value them as a very serious partner. And the beauty of it is that when they come on board, we also are able to engage now with the Kenya Defense Forces because they have a framework of understanding between themselves. And we have seen the major significant gain that we have been able to see today. We cannot be able to do this alone. And you also appreciate that the model of Adopt a Forest Framework also bring on board the livelihood of the communities. For example, the seedlings that are being planted here, part of them are being sourced from the community nurseries, meaning the communities, even during the tough times of the COVID, were able to sustain their livelihood. When they come to the issue of digging of the holes and even sometime planting, the communities are benefiting to, for their livelihood because the communities must perceive Kenya Forest Service and their partners as allies. That way, they're able to help us to protect and guard our forest resources. In this place, they have understood that their forests are very critical water catchment areas for rivers that flow towards Lake Baringo, Bogoria, and Lake Victoria. And more so before the waters go there, the water serves the people around this area. And therefore, by planting trees and restoring this degraded area, we are able to bounce back to where we should be, and people will be guaranteed water. Water is life. With no water, there is no life. Beyond that also, we have worked uh, very, very strategically with the Kenya Defense Forces through the Environment Soldier Program. They have adopted several forest blocks, and today, from the assessment we have made, they have been able to inject about 20 million tree seedlings with this collaboration. And this is something that we must not take for granted. And of course, to mention that when we are working like this in this place, of course, we have the Ministry of Interior, who are the coordinators of all environmental matters, and we are with them because when the, it comes to the issues of conservation, it borders both the jurisdiction of the Kenya Forest Service, but also the community. And we must work together as a government to deliver this commitment. So it's a very, very strategic kind of an intervention. And as Kenya Forest Service, because we have had already really adopted a forest framework, about 25,000 hectares have been committed, and the private sector and the government agencies will support us. But one of the major success we have had last year is that one year alone, we are out of the 4,000 482,000, we were able to rehabilitate about 70,000. So meaning that if we work together, if we got other partners and who I want to encourage to come on board, we will be able in the next four or five years to deal with the question of degradation and we'll be talking about now protecting the integrity of the forest that we would have had. Uh, my name is Wycliffe Matika. I'm the acting uh, executive director of the Green Bed Movement because we are changing the discourse. Uh, matters environment are key issues of public uh, interest and we are here to launch it's a target that we have been doing during this long rain season the 1.2 million uh, indigenous tree launch 
Uh, maybe just something also uh, to mention in the background, why we are, particularly where we are in the Maji Mazuri. As the word says, it's a place where it's a spring, and in conservation it's a sponge, uh, because it recharges other streams and rivers. We are at the Rift Valley, and the Rift Valley is a source of 12 permanent rivers and five lakes. All these lakes are transboundary in nature, and they are supporting millions of livelihoods, uh, millions uh, of agricultural and socioeconomic activities, both in the upstream and in the downstream. Therefore, as the Green Pen movement, we are using a watershed-based approach, where we believe that as we plant trees in the upstream, we'll be able to bring a healing effect uh, towards the downstream and through transition areas. And when we are talking about Ma, we are looking even at Masai Mara, we are looking at Lake Victoria, Lake Natron, we are looking even at Lake Nakuru. So we are here as our little thing, the little thing just to contribute towards and to walk the journey towards the 10% tree cover. Uh, and therefore, in this particular forest, last year we are here with our partners, we were able to do all, close to 600,000. This year we are doing 530,000 seedlings. That quantified together uh, is 1 million indigenous seedlings. But quite very importantly is that we are in a very challenging period uh, socioeconomically, and GBM is using this tree planting as a model to entrench peace, but also to ensure that there's a stimulus uh, to particularly the people, the surrounding communities who are the social fence of, of, of this particular uh, watershed. Uh, and we are giving them an opportunity uh, to, uh, to, to raise, the, we are purchasing the seedling stocks from them. They are providing labor, uh, they are providing the casual labor uh, in the transportation, and therefore it's a whole impetus uh, towards uh, uh, conservation. And just to say that uh, there are interlinkages, why we are here is also to prove that there are interlinkages between even poverty, which is SDG 1, and other SDGs like 15 and 13. We cannot confront such challenges of uh, uh, poverty without also looking at the interlinkages within deforestation and forest degradation. And therefore we are here to restore and to, th to change the story, uh, particularly at uh, Maji Mazuri. Yeah, the, the legacy of uh, Professor Mangare, Wangare Madai is still, uh, of course, on. It was not a legacy for Kenya because she was a global leader. It was a legacy for Africa. It was also a, a legacy for, uh, for Kenya. I want to say that through this legacy, we are seeing us commit even to AFRI 100, which is a restoration initiative. There are also the climate action issues. Uh, we remember last year and this year we have had serious issues, uh, the warming up of the climate. And that's why we are having erratic uh, rainfall this year. We, last year we planned it in June. You can see this year we are doing August. So uh, I must say, as Professor used to say, that her message is timelier. There's more to be done, but we are not yet there. Uh, my name is uh, Kano Joel Kuprap Cherutich from Kilgel Carson. Kenya Defense Forces has been pan partnering with the uh, Green Belt Movement in uh, environmental issues. Uh, these endeavors began way back in 2003 when our strategic leaders realized that most of the issues that we are facing, security related issues that we are facing, emanates from environment. And since then, we embarked on that program and we have been able to plant over 20 million trees across the country. Uh, we, KDF, continues to part, continue with our partners, uh, good relationship that we have, we have been having with uh, our partners in this uh, program.